Welcome to part two of GearWig's modeling guide for the Sacral Vault. We'll start this part where we left off the last one, with the gaiters. We have them base coated in their three basic colors, the green of their scales, their darker green back plates, and their yellowish underbelly. Now we'll use some wet blending to add highlights to all three of these elements. We'll highlight the scaly areas with a really bright, almost neon green. We'll use a slightly darker bright green for the back plates, and then we'll blend the yellow underbelly and the green scale area together to make it look more organic. This is our wet palette. We set it up using the techniques discussed in our simple blending video. And we'll be using a total of five colors to highlight our gaiters. Here we have the darker Caliban green we used to paint the back plates. We'll highlight those with this warpstone glow. This is the Lauren Forest we used to base our scales. We'll highlight that with a neon moot green. And this is our underbelly color. We'll blend that in with the Lauren Forest to make the belly look a little more organic. We'll start by blending the scale areas. We'll put some base Lauren green around we'll blend our highlight layer into this base. So we're putting the base in all the lower areas, in the cracks, the residual areas, anything that might be a shadow. We're going to paint the raised areas, the neon green, and then blend that green down into the base so it looks like a gradient and isn't just a stark neon green splash on top of the scales. We'll paint a circular blobby area around the raised part of the scales, the part where we imagine the light hitting and we'll paint the neon green right up until our base Lauren Forest, so the two are right next to each other in sort of a stripe. We'll then wash our brush off and slowly fudge the stripe between the two to blend them. The paint is still wet on the model, and we're effectively mixing the two paints on top of the model, so there is a gradient from the forest green up to the neon green. And like with all blending, you just sort of go back and forth between the two until you get the right gradient, the one that looks good. We'll use the same process on the next muscly area, anywhere a muscle bulges out, anywhere there's a raised area. We'll draw sort of an oval of base green around it and then hit the raised area with neon green and blend the two. We use the same method for blending highlights onto the back plates. I start by taking the base Caliban green and painting it into all the recessed shadowy areas of the back plates. I want to highlight the outer edges of the back plates because they'll be getting the light. We throw the warpstone glow on the outside like that. It's sort of just a basic stripe along the back that meets up with the base color by the recesses and then we blend the two together.
I decide I want to highlight some of the raised areas on the underbelly as well. I end up adding a sixth color to our palette, which is just a brighter, more yellowy version of the underbelly color. So just like before, I paint the base, I paint a layer of wet paint into the recessed areas of the underbelly, and then I splash on this brighter yellow and sort of the raised areas and then just blend the two together. This effect is subtle and not particularly noticeable because this guy will be facing the vault, so this is a step you can skip, but it's fun. To blend the underbelly yellow into the scales, we'll start by painting an underbelly stripe right along his underbelly side, and we'll leave that wet as we paint a green stripe right next to it in the green area. And just like before, as they're still wet, we'll just blend them together. This comes out nice. It'll look like the green is slowly turning into a yellow. It looks more organic, not that he has a one big yellow stripe on his body, but it just sort of transitions from green to greenish yellow. It takes a little time to get right. Uh, it's not, it doesn't blend as easy as say the green and neon green when you're going from green to yellow. It might take a couple extra passes, uh, but it looks good when it's done. And I get under his chin a little bit, his inner thigh, stuff like that. Any place where uh, the yellow from his underbelly would reach out into his scales, you can just blend that nicely. We'll do the same thing to the area under his tail, too. When it's all done, our gators look like this, highlighted. It looks even brighter in person, almost too bright. Later, when all this is dried, we'll hit the whole area with a thin wash that will pool into the cracks of his scales and make the scales really pop. As a side effect, it will bring these highlights down a little bit. This is typical. When you add highlights to a model you want to wash, you have to go super bright because it's all going to tone down. Uh, it tones down even by drying. so. Endeavor to be really bright at first, and it'll come down to something more normal and good looking. While those are drying, we'll go back to the vault 
which needs plenty of base coating before we can even start highlighting. Uh, all we got is the stone color now. We need to paint about a million skulls, both the spooky haunted green skulls in the, on the vault itself, and then all the skulls with candles piled around it. Additionally, we'll have to paint about a million candles. When you have multiple elements to base coat at once, it's better to start with the lower elements, the ones beneath everything. That way, if you splash around on the top stuff, you'll just repaint that anyway. We'll start with the spooky skulls, recessed in the vault. We'll paint them this spooky green. We'll use a fine detail brush because uh, it's kind of tough to get in there. And we'll very slowly and patiently hit every skull on the side. We're using a typical base consistency, like about the consistency of milk. This is a nice thick color that bases well. It doesn't uh, usually need a second coat, but uh, I'll go over a couple of the areas that look at all splotchy. Later in the process, we'll put a wash here to pick out the details, like the eyeballs and the skulls and stuff, and then we'll highlight the upper areas. But right now we want a solid base of green to make sure all the gray primer is covered up. Base coating is usually the most tedious part. Highlighting and washing is fun and easy and looks great, but uh, base coating is the first time-consuming, necessary, boring step to get done before any of that happens. I try to be careful not to splash around on the stone. The uh, stone effect we got is difficult to recreate after we're done dry brushing, so I don't want to splash a big thing of green onto it and then try to have to fix it again. That said, if a little green does get on the edges, that'll be fine because we'll be putting on a glow effect later. I we'll want the, the nearby stone to look like it's glowing green from these spooky skulls. So a little bit of splash is okay, but I try to be very careful. And when they're all base coated, it looks like this. Again, it took pretty well onto the primer. There weren't any splotchy areas, it was easy. And we did the same to the top. And it looks like that. We'll start painting all the skulls next, the bone-colored skulls. This pile of junk on the front of the, uh, the altar is a bunch of skulls with snakes and alligator heads on top. So we'll easily paint the snakes and alligator heads later. We want to get down below them and get all the skulls painted first. So we'll use that Ushtabi bone I showed and we'll just do a nice even base coat over all the skulls. We'll have to go over each of these twice uh, because it looks splotchy going on. Ushtabi bone is a sort of light color and on this dark gray primer we'll probably need two coats. I'm using a big fat base brush here I don't care about splashing onto any of the other stuff. We're obviously going to have to paint the candles and snakes and alligator heads anyway, so if they get a little extra bone color on them, that won't matter. The important thing here is to cover every bone surface, make sure there isn't any gray primer left. And after two coats of that, the bone elements look like this. Plenty of annoying little skulls all over the place, so we just calmly and patiently hit them all. And we do the same to the top element. Next up are the million candles on this thing. I want the candles to look a little different, I want them to look sort of bright. I certainly don't want to paint them all the same color. So I've decided to pick five different candle colors. We got sort of a yellowy brown, nice green, a red, a purple, and a blue. We'll hit all the candles with these base colors and then we'll highlight them later.
I'll start with this purple. Purple candles look cool. And I'm going to try to hit about every fifth candle, since we're doing five colors. And ideally, I don't want there to be, say, two purple candles right next to each other. So I try to spread the colors out and make them look bright and varied without following a very set pattern. After we paint all five candle colors, every candle is painted, and it looks a bit like this. The candles are dark right now, we'll highlight them lighter later, focusing on the wax dripping down off of them. And we did the same to the top, so you get the same sort of bright rainbow candle deal here. And finally, I just base coat all the rest of the stuff. The vines, the little gold plates, the dude on top, the occasional shriveled head, and alligator head. Use the same process I used for everything else. I just wanted to make sure everything had a base coat before we started doing any highlights. I think the only thing left to paint was the snake on there, but everything else just sort of got a regular base coat ready for highlights. First we'll start by using some washes. Washes will pool into the cracked areas like the eyeballs of the skulls and such, automatically put shadows in there and make the raised areas sort of pop out. We'll use some dark green here, bile tan green, on the spooky skulls. This way the cracks in between them and the eyeballs will pop immediately. Usually I thin my washes down, but I kept this one pretty thick. Uh, I wanted to make sure it really stood out, and I hadn't used that uh, spooky color before so I wasn't sure how it would work. And I really like the way the thick wash went on. Like right away, the skulls have much more detail here, so this worked out well. This is one of the easiest ways to highlight edges and stuff. Just dump a bunch of wash in there, let it pool up, and it does the job for you. You just got to be careful it doesn't pool in areas you don't want to or it doesn't pool too much. But you do want a bunch of it in the eyeballs, in the teeth, in between the skulls, stuff like that. And we do the same to the skulls on the top element. You can see right there, when it pulls up a little bit too much, I try to spread it out, try to keep it nice and even, but at the same time, make sure every eyeball, every screaming mouth, every little crack in between gets some of it so the detail comes out. You can see just by putting the brush on it, it immediately looks a lot better. Later when we highlight these, it'll add a third element, and there will be a lot of gradient difference between the darkest and the lightest areas that will really pop. We're going to use the same method on the bone areas. I want to get into all the little cracks and teeth and eye, eye sockets and everything. We'll use some Agrax Earthshade, a dark brown. Uh, these Citadel washes are great. You can make your own just by thinning acrylic paint a lot. Keep it really nice and thin and then just apply it over and over again. Uh, with bone here, I can keep the, uh, I use this right out of the pot, which is pretty thick for a wash, but it looks good on bone. Even if it sort of smudges and leaves little smears, it just makes the bone look dirty which is kind of cool anyway. It's really hard to mess this up. So if you want your bone to be particularly bright or whitish, uh, you can go a little easy on the wash and go heavier on highlights later. But I like to keep mine sort of dirty and grimy. And uh, this wash looks great no matter how heavy you put it on. And you can see right away it just starts picking out details like teeth and holes and stuff. It looks great. Careful not to let it pool up too much 
Just make sure it pulls in the recessed areas, anything with shadow. And the final effect of the wash looks like this. We've got most of the recessed areas. We've got some sort of smudgy brown dirty skulls here. Later we'll hit them with a highlight. We'll hit the raised edges with a lighter bone color that will stand out and add a nice gradient for them. You notice the wash like gets in on every little piece of ribs and finger bone. It's nice. It picks up a lot of detail. And when we come back for part three, we'll hit these gators with a wash. It will pull up into their scales to set them apart and it'll tone down some of the bright neon highlights and make them a more natural green. Thank you for watching part two of this modeling guide. For more guides, battle reports, and articles, check out GearWig.com. You can email me at boss at GearWig.com or check out our Facebook or Twitter pages. If you want to help the site, subscribe to the YouTube channel and tell a friend. Thank you.